Hi everyone, I don't think this is gonna go up on a Martini Monday because I don't actually think I'm gonna have enough time to edit this video in time. But just in case, happy Martini Monday. Although I am honestly just having a very unglamorous seltzer water with a splash of cranberry juice. But we can pretend it's like a vodka cranberry or something, a fizzy vodka cranberry apparently. And uh, this is what I'll be drinking while sifting through my empties with you guys. So if you're interested to see all the products I've used up in January, February, and by now most of March, then stay tuned. My initial goal was to make sure that I do an empties video as soon as my trash bin that's under my desk fills up. You guys are not ready for this. I mean, I would say this is pretty full and I have two products that are on my desk because y you can see it's not happening otherwise. Yeah. Whew. She is full again and I really need to talk about these empties now because we are overflowing. Before we jump into my empties, if you are new here, then hi and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. My name is Natalia and I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty. 2024 is the year that I'm trying to use more of the products that are already in my collection and essentially buy less so that I'm not as overwhelmed. I have so many things that are sitting around still brand new and I'm trying to change as much of that as possible as well as revisit some of the older products that I just haven't used in a very long time. I am decluttering as I go, seeing what still serves me and what doesn't, and just trying to learn a bit more about my preferences this year. So if you're interested in a mixed bag of content where we talk about old products, some new products, enjoy using the makeup that we already own, then I hope you will consider subscribing and joining us here. And without any further ado, let's get into this empties video. Oh boy. Okay. I've laid out everything in front of me on my desk. Some of it is gross and sticky and disgusting. I'm just going to be throwing it back into my bin as I talk about it uh, so that later I can trash all this stuff. Honestly, I mean, I know it's only been like two and a half, three months, but somehow it seems like a lot and it seems like I'm very overwhelmed. I feel like maybe some of my declutter items snuck in here, which I was not really planning on doing. I wonder if I have two trash cans under my desk. I have one for like regular trash that I throw out on a, you know, weekly basis. Basis. And then I have this separate bin for all the beauty products that I want to talk to you guys about. And I wonder if maybe I mixed up a couple of things because it seems like a lot. So let's get some of the big ticket items as far as size out of here so that I'm feeling less stressed and overwhelmed. I used up this Tree Hut Velvet Coffee Shea Sugar Scrub that I got at TJ Maxx for $5.99. And I really, really enjoyed this. I like Tree Hut scrubs in general. I find them for me the perfect amount of scrubby because I I actually do like a good exfoliation. You know, I'm not like super gentle on my skin, to be honest. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. So I find this to be a perfect scrubbiness. Like it's not abrasive, but I feel something. And I really loved the scent, coffee. I mean, how can you possibly go wrong? And then I also just recently used up this Dr. Teal's Shea Sugar Scrub. This is the Cannabis Sativa Hemp Seed Oil with Essential Oils. I liked the scent of this. It was much more like refreshing and a little bit grassy, earthy, spa-like. So that part of it I really liked. And overall, it was a very pleasant experience. I just didn't find this quite as scrubby as the tree hut. And I felt like the oils that the scrub was sitting in was not quite as moisturizing. So I think this is perfect for the summer for me. Whereas this I would use all year round and especially in the winter. And I have, I just pulled out another tree hut one that I had on backup. I think it's another coffee one, but a slight slightly different scent. It's, instead of like a velvet coffee, it's like an iced coffee or some such thing. So I figured since it's still only pretending to be spring here in New York and still kind of chilly, I would you go through that one first and then save my other Dr. Teal's one. I think I have like a lemon one for the summer. So those two are done. Um, another fairly large item is this Weleda. Weleda? I, I think Whole Foods sells this brand. My mom got this for me. This is the Skin Food Body Butter. This is so incredibly moisturizing. Smells quite nice. I would use this not just like on my hands and on 
on my body but especially on my feet after a shower throw this on my feet put on some socks and sleep in that my feet were just a total different level of bb soft because i really struggle with very dry skin in general especially on my feet my mom i don't know saw somebody talk about this and who claimed that this is fantastic for that purpose and she knew that i struggle with that and she got me this and i absolutely loved it to the point that when i ran out of it I asked her to pick up another one for me because she lives very close to a Whole Foods. So I have this one that I've already not only started using, but have been using a lot. So clearly this is definitely a product I love and I will continue to repurchase. I still really like my first Aid Beauty, the cream, the moisturizing cream, and that I use after a shower, like all over my legs, after shaving and such. This is for more severe cases. Like if I'm really feeling dry, I use this on my hands a lot because I do have eczema. And if I'm doing a lot of dishes or just, I don't know, the weather changes, this is great. Since I'm on skincare, I got this, I wanna say in a subscription box quite a while ago, and I finally went through this. I enjoyed this product. This is the M Greengrass Skincare Foaming Body Scrub. The fragrance for this is cardamom lavender. I really enjoy the packaging. They list all the notes here. So this one was inspired by India, and the notes are bergamot, lemon, cardamom, lavender, coffee, geranium, rose, amber, balsam, and patchouli. I loved the scent. I do have to say, I don't know. I mean, it foamed, but not a lot. It says it's a foaming body scrub. Maybe I didn't use this properly. They even say it's a two-in-one lightly foaming gel-based scrub that exfoliates, cleanses, and hydrates dry skin. I would say for me, hydrates, yes exfoliates mildly because I didn't feel like there was enough of the scrubby pieces. I felt like there was more of the gel than there was of the scrub. And it does say very lightly foaming. So it's something I would consider looking into. I don't know how much these are. I'd be curious to see what are the scents they have. I did not not like this product. It just, it wasn't like 100% perfect, but something I really enjoyed. The experience, I think it was the scent. The scent and like the feel afterwards, the fact that it was moisturizing, that part I really enjoyed to the point where I would consider looking into this brand, this um, uh, M Green Grass, see if maybe they have some sales, maybe some other scents that are interesting. And I would definitely consider looking into this further. So it's a made in America, inspired by the world, seems to be their motto. And they have all the ingredients listed on the back. I enjoyed the experience of using this overall. Maybe not my perfect product. And I think it would really depend on the price as far as whether I would go ahead and repurchase this or try anything else from the brand. I don't think I have any more body care, but if something pops up along the way, we'll talk about it then. Let's talk about skincare because I have m the majority here is skincare and a little bit of hair care. A bunch of cleansers. I've been on a cleanser kick. This is the Inky List Cleansing Balm. This product grew on me a little bit. I do have to say that when I first got it, I didn't realize that this is a product you have to warm up because it can solidify. So I really struggled to squeeze it out at first. There's a part of me that appreciates the fact that this is in a squeezy tube as opposed to a tub that you have to dig into, but I'm used to cleansing balms being in a tub and I think I kind of would have preferred this product that way. Aside from that, aside from the potential packaging flaw, I also didn't feel like this was the best cleansing balm I ever used. I felt like I had to use quite a bit. I didn't feel like it got completely everything off. The texture wasn't 100% my favorite. I do prefer a very smooth cleansing balm. I don't want any grit to it. I love exfoliating exfoliating products when I am like mentally prepared to exfoliate my skin. But if I am taking off my makeup, I need that to be a very gentle process. Actually, one of the main reasons I need that to be a gentle process is because I really do struggle with eczema and psoriasis. And I forgot to mention at the start of this video, that is why I have no eye makeup on. I think I mentioned it before. I've been struggling with some sort of an irritation on my eye, and I'm starting to think that it might be an eczema or a psoriasis flare-up because I had it happen once. I waited a few days and didn't wear any eye makeup 
makeup it went away i started wearing makeup again and it came right back so i think it's like the scrubbing of me taking off my makeup that actually irritates things makes the flare-up come back that's yet another reason i cannot be having any scrubby products in my cleansing balm because i use my cleansing balm to take off all my makeup including my eye makeup so i really need something very smooth and gentle and this i didn't feel like was it i don't think i know that the inky list has a very good price point and such but i really don't think i would repurchase this i had a ton of little samples i think i got them like as an ulta gift with purchase or something one of them was the cetaphil gentle skin cleanser i used to go through giant tubs of this back in the day all throughout my 20s and for some reason i guess because i became kind of a product junkie and i keep wanting to try new things i backed away from this and this reminded me that this is a really good solid simple easygoing cleanser so if you're a no frills kind of person and you want something a bit more affordable i mean cetaphil is not the cheapest brand at the drugstore but you can find it on sale and definitely you get kind of your bang for the buck because usually it comes in this big value size pack not to mention i think they carry like double packs of this on occasion at costco if i'm not mistaken so you can find this on a really good sale or on a really good deal and if you're not one who cares about the newest and the latest and the greatest as far as cleansers are concerned and you just want something that is a very gentle skin cleanser as it says i would use this for a second cleanse or something in the morning it's not stripping it's great i mean it's very easygoing simple creamy cleanser that does the job the milk makeup and sorry guys i do cut my products because you can get quite a few more uses if you do that so this is the vegan milk cleanser i find these as at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. This must be by now like my third or fourth one. As I've been trying more and more cleansers, I can't say this is my favorite anymore. This definitely used to be one of my top favorites, but it's still a very good cleanser. This is much thicker than let's say the Cetaphil. I prefer cream cleansers for my dry and easily irritated skin. And this is a thick, rich, creamy cleanser. I like cleansers like that, especially in the winter. It just, I don't know, makes me feel like I'm, you know, hugging my skin a little more. It's like a more of a cozy cleanser, more of a hydrating cleanser. I think what I've liked less this time around is the smell of this cleanser. And I don't think it's supposed to really have a scent, but it has something in it that didn't quite grow on me this uh, third or fourth time around. Would I try this again? I still might. I still might give this one more chance because I overall really like the cleanser. I just wasn't sure if I liked the scent this time around, but I can look past that. I have a couple of cleansers right now that I'm just dying to use up because I cannot, cannot stand the scent at all. This, this in comparison actually just smells heavenly, <laughs> but still not my favorite scent, but a really, really nice cleanser that I've enjoyed for quite a few years. Okay, one of my favorite cleansers that I actually went on to repurchase in this latest Ulta semi-annual sale that they just had is the peach and lily power calm hydrating gel cleanser this is something that checks off all the boxes it is not a cream it is more of a gel it even says that in the name but it is in fact soothing non-irritating very gentle i'm trying to remember if it has a scent i think it does but it's like a very calming also spa-like scent nothing offensive i really really enjoyed this cleanser i mean clearly i bought it full size. I was so excited to see it at 50% off in the sale. In general, I've had such great luck with Peach and Lily products. I think because they're just so easygoing and so gentle, non-irritating. There's no frills. There's no extra bells and whistles. There's none of this crazy perfumery going on. Really like Peach and Lily and I am excited to actually bust into that full size cleanser once I use up all the minis that are currently hanging out in my shower. Not sure if I have any other cleanser but since I just talked about Peach and Lily, here's another product I really enjoyed. This is the Glass Skin Face Polisher. Clearly, this is a sample size. This is one of those powders that you rub in and exfoliate with. And I can't remember. I feel like I've mentioned in some video. I don't think there's anything left in Oh, well, I mean, it, it looks like a white powder. So I guess, you know, some, some might might find that a little suspicious, but it's just a face polisher. <laughs> I find this very similar to the Dermalogica one. In fact, I wanna say, I'm trying to remember if even the scent 
No, I can't really smell it anymore. I know I've talked about this in some other video and I can't remember now what the scent was. I can't remember if I mentioned that even the scent reminds me of the Dermalogica or if in fact that was the only difference that I thought these two products had, the Dermalogica and the Peach and Lily. Because I swear they behave exactly the same way. So from now on, honestly, I will probably just be on the lookout for whichever one I can find at a better discount. But yeah, great product, really enjoyed it. If you're into face polishes like that, um, you know, where you mix the powder with the water. I love having one of these in the shower. I don't believe I have anything like that right now. In the future, if, if anything goes on sale, I will definitely pick it up. Oh, I did find one more cleanser, my Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I decided to use up this travel mini because I think I have one more. I usually save these for actual travel. This is a balm I used to use for years and years. And now I've gotten into trying all the other cleansing bombs so I can't say this is my favorite anymore but it's still one that if I have it I will use it I've um, really enjoyed the drunk elephant cleansing balm I like the pharmacy one there's one I'm using right now that I can't remember the name of but I'm enjoying that as well so there's a lot more on the market now I feel like Clinique kind of had I mean I don't want to say they were the original cleansing balm but I think when this product was more popular they were not as many available so that's how I stumbled upon this one and it was one that you could find on sale fairly easily. So I just continued to repurchase this one for many years and now I'm branching out. So as I said, will I never use this again? No, I mean, if, especially if I find one at a, you know, unbeatable discount, I'll definitely pick one up, but it's no longer my holy grail cleansing balm. In fact, I don't think I have a holy grail cleansing balm anymore. There's just quite a few I enjoy and I would be happy to rotate through. Okay, let's quickly uh, talk about some sunscreen that I have either used up or they've expired. The one that I didn't finish fully using up is the Polish Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. I thought this was quite nice. I don't think it was my favorite sunscreen, but I think what I liked about it is that it was fairly liquidy, which I find tends to blend into the skin a lot faster and easier and leaves less of a white cast. So it just kind of sinks into the skin. And as I said, the only reason I'm throwing this out is because it did expire but this was the SPF 50 definitely something I would consider in the future but right now I'm trying to go through whatever I have because I have a lot of sunscreens and obviously I don't want them all to expire I want to actually use them another one that was threatening to expire and I did manage to use pretty much all of it I think I, I don't think I was able to really pump much more is this Josie Moran get even sun milk SPF 33 this is a mineral sunscreen and I've used this in the past. I don't remember how I stumbled across this. I want to say maybe TJ Maxx and Marshalls, which is probably why it had a shorter lifespan. I like this because it smells nice. It doesn't have the sunscreen smell, or at least it's masked by some sort of a fairly gentle, like a citrusy. It's like a sweet. I am terrible at describing scents. I am so sorry. <laughs> I really need to get better because I love fragrance, but I can never explain why or how or what I enjoy. But regardless, it, it has the sunscreen smell, but it's masked by something that's like a little bit sweet. I really don't enjoy the smell of sunscreen, so I prefer something that is scented in that regard. Yes, not always because of my sensitive skin. If I'm going to make myself use sunscreen, it has to be one I am enjoying. This is one I really enjoy. I like Josie Marin products in the past. I used to use the argan oil all the time, but they're expensive. So unless I can find it on sale or at like a TG Maxx or Marshalls or some such thing, I usually don't buy them just because it's pricey. But this is a product I would always be on the lookout for. And then another one that I really enjoyed and did actually use up completely is this mini from Supergroup. This is the glow screen. This is one I really enjoy in the summer because it has a little bit of a tint and a glow. And sometimes I would use this not like in lieu of foundation, but basically it just would give me a healthy sheen on my no makeup days, which is honestly a lot of my days. So this is definitely one. I'm sure this came in like a sample pack and this is definitely one I enjoyed. So once I use up a lot of my sunscreens, this might be one that I would 
would want to have in my rotation for the summer in the future. And I'm super proud of myself for even having sunscreen empties because sunscreen is something I only started wearing more regularly fairly recently in the past couple of years and I've gotten a lot better about doing it almost daily. So I'm, I'm getting there. I am getting there. Oh, I found one more cleanser. This is the Tatcha Rice Wash Cleanser. I really like this, but we all know Tatcha is expensive. Unless this baby goes on sale or I can get another sample, I don't foresee myself repurchasing it anytime soon. Just because as much as I enjoyed it, I feel like I have enough cleansers and I feel like this is the luxury experience because the texture of it was smoother and silkier and nicer and the smell of it felt more high-end. So yes, the experience is a lot more luxurious, but so is the price tag. And I think for now, I'm okay sticking with something like my Peach and Lily cleanser. Okay, here's a product that I really didn't enjoy and I'm just throwing it out. I actually did try to use this quite a lot and at some point I just gave up. This I think I got as a gift with purchase from SECO, from the cosmetics company store sometime last summer. This is the Glam Glow Super Smooth Blemish Clearing 5 Minute Mask to Scrub. I hated the smell, I didn't really enjoy the texture, but mostly I hated the smell honestly. And, and I didn't feel like it did anything. Yes, I do have blemishes, especially lately, but not that many. Not enough to justify having to deal with a anti-blemish mask every week. I would rather use other masks. And considering I absolutely despised the scent and didn't really like the texture either, I'm just not going to force myself to continue using this. Oh, another sunscreen that I only went through about half before it expired is this Biosans, what is this, with rose, with reed? I don't know. This is the squalene and zinc sheer mineral sunscreen. I think this is like a limited edition or a spin-off off of the original in the green packaging. That one I have used up one and I have a mini of it that I am working through right now. When I first started wearing sunscreen, I think because the first few I tried were even worse as far as the smell and the thick texture, that when I found the sunscreen, I thought it was just the most amazing thing ever and now the more sunscreens that I'm trying the less I'm liking this one to be honest so I don't really see myself repurchasing these Biosun sunscreens the only way I see them coming into my life is maybe in sampler packs or gift with purchases but yeah I don't see myself getting the full sizes at any time soon and I think the reason for why I didn't end up going through this aside from the fact that I just have way too many products was that I just kept reaching for something else even when I knew this was the one that was gonna expire first just because I stopped enjoying okay. it. I have this Peter Thomas Roth cucumber mask. This has been around for so long. This is the gel mask and I've used these little sizes, tons of them all throughout the years. I used to in fact years ago buy the holiday sampler packs of the Peter Thomas uh, Roth masks. I think the brand still makes the sampler and I think it to this day looks practically identical to whatever was available like eight years ago, but it would come with like five different minis of the masks. There would be like the pumpkin one that I really enjoyed in the past, this cucumber one, a charcoal one, and then a couple of others. This is a really nice cooling a calming, gentle mask. I would use this sometimes in the shower, you know, when I'm doing all of the other things. And it says it is a detoxifying hydrator, which is interesting. I didn't actually realize that this one claims to be detoxifying. It says it's refreshing, cooling, moisturizing, calming gel that helps soothe dry, irritated skin with extracts of cucumber, papaya, pineapple, and aloe. And I would say that's pretty accurate. It is really all of those things. And it is a mask that I I've enjoyed for a long time and would gladly get another mini of. I don't think I would get a full size just because again, I have just so much. So unless I go through everything and then become a little bit more minimal with the amount of beauty products that I'm hoarding, I think minis are actually the way to go for me because it gives me that opportunity to continue using some of my favorite products from the past while still trying other things. Yeah, one that I really enjoy. A toner that I went through 
by CosRx. This is the watery toner, the Hydrium watery toner with hyaluronic acid and allantoin. I really like this. I like CosRx products. I didn't feel like it was moisturizing enough for me. I like toners. I know toners usually are very watery and that's kind of the point and they're just supposed to help with your pH or whatnot. But I actually prefer, I think it's Claire's that makes one. So I'm sure there must be other, especially Korean skincare brands that do this. I prefer toners that have just a tiny bit of thickness to them, like almost like a toner slash serum, like a hybrid effect. Again, maybe it's like that coziness on my skin. Maybe it's a psychological thing where I feel like that should be more hydrating. I just felt like this, you know, runs off your skin too quick. You have to use more because of that. It's one I really enjoyed, don't get me wrong. And I think I bought this at TJ Maxx. If I see another one and it's a really good price, I don't see why I actually wouldn't repurchase it. I quite possibly might. It's just not my favorite favorite toner, but it was very nice and gentle. I feel like this is one of those products I'd almost prefer in a spray bottle though. That's how liquidy it was. So this in a spray bottle, I have a feeling I would have really liked. This in like a toner bottle because I am not using cottons as often anymore. I like to pour the toner in my hand and then just pat it in. This was a product that was very difficult to do that way. This is something you probably really have to use with a cotton so that it can absorb and not have it, you know, running everywhere. Okay, let's get into some moisturizers. I know I'm a little bit, as always, all over the place, but I used up my Tula 24-7 Moisture Hydrating Day and Night Cream. Can't remember if this was in the Ulta sale this time around, but I know I picked this up in a former 21 Days of Beauty sale. I really like Tula products. The only thing I didn't love about this was the scent. It's one I can tolerate, but it reminds me of a drugstore product, and I couldn't think of whether it was Nivea that it reminded me of, or like a cold cream, you know, one of those Pond's cold creams or some such thing, but it has a little bit of that old school moisturizer scent. If you know what I'm talking about, then you've probably tried those products, <laughs> those other ones that I am mentioning. But yeah, it, it wasn't my favorite smell, but it was very moisturizing. I'm glad I was using this in the winter. And while I don't love the smell, again, if this came back into my life in one way or another, I would still gladly use it up again. Again. Not sure if I would repurchase it myself though, purely based unfortunately on the scent because apparently I'm really picky about my scents in skincare and I don't think I'm the only one. Here's a product that I didn't use up. Was it also because of the scent? Yes, and because of the texture now that I opened it and looked at it. So this is the Sephora AHA Fruit Acids Firming Sleeping Cream. I hated the scent because to me this smelled kind of like rotten fruit or rotten something like it's or like something that's turning into vinegar, like something that's spoiling. I, something was not nice in this smell. And it was like that from day one. So I don't think it was one of those, oh, it's gone bad situations. I really do feel like that is what this product smells like. And then it has like this thick, almost like a putty texture. And I don't know, really threw me off. I really didn't enjoy it. And you could see, I mean, I did go through pr probably like half or almost half of this. Really was forcing myself to try to use this thing up and at some point it just started turning me off more and more and to the point where it would always almost like make me sick and I was like you know what why am I doing this we're we're gonna move on and get rid of that. A moisturizer that I loved, and in fact, I loved it so much that somehow I ended up with two of these birthday sampler packs from last year or the year before when Sephora was giving out the birthday gifts. I don't remember if like maybe a friend of mine was like, hey, I'm not gonna use mine. Let me pick you up whatever you want. And I ended up doing the same exact thing. But this Pharmacy Honey Halo is probably one of my favorite moisturizers. And and I really need to look out for a sale. I think I keep stalling because I'm like, oh, I have so many other things, I have so many other things. And yes, I do, and I need to go through what I have, but then I need to remember to actually look for this on a sale and buy this full size, because I would love to use this moisturizer, especially come next winter. So that should be a goal. Use up the moisturizers that I currently have in my collection and then before next winter look out for Black Friday sales or some such thing and purchase this in a full size. 
because that is probably one of my favorite moisturizers as of right now. Another moisturizer that I enjoyed, and I think this would be a great one uh, for all year round, maybe not quite hydrating enough for the winter for me, is this Glow Recipe Plum Plump, a hyaluronic cream. I feel like this would be a great summer or spring moisturizer for me. I don't remember what it smelled like, and I remember using this up quite a while ago at the very start of this year. So by now it's been over two months and I can't quite remember the scent but I do remember really enjoyed the cream. I also can't remember if it was like a light cream or a gel. Oh, it says hyaluronic cream, so it must have been a light cream, but I don't think it was a very thick one. I think it was a very like light fluffy cream, and I enjoyed that. It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream, another great thick moisturizer that I really enjoyed in the winter time. I'm sure some of these minis I even like traveled with, and I also am just on a mission to get rid of the small stuff because I have so many minis. Really really like this one. This one may have been in the Ulta sale, but I was trying to not buy a lot of skincare, so I'm sure it's gonna go on sale at some point, somewhere. I can always get it in the future. Um, another solid cream, the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. Really good moisturizer. I used this up fairly recently. Not as thick as I would have expected Kiehl's to be, because I do find most of their products are quite hydrating and moisturizing and on the thicker side. It wasn't a light, light cream, but it wasn't a thick cream like like let's say the Glow Recipe or uh, the It Cosmetics. This was like a medium consistency and something I could see myself also really enjoying like during the change of the seasons. Not in the dead of winter, not in the summer, but change of seasons, I think this would have been a really good one for me. So actually considering I just used it up like a week ago, this is great. March was a perfect time to use it. This is um, an e.l.f. moisturizer, the Super Hydrate Moisturizer with Hydrating squ Squalene. If I remember correctly, I had very little of this left. I think I started using it sometime last year, quite possibly in the summer, and then abandoned it because this is a gel and and not hydrating enough for the winter. This is an okay moisturizer for me for the summer. If I remember correctly, it reminded me in texture a little bit of like water creams. I think this is something if you have normal to oily skin, you would enjoy. I didn't feel like it's hydrating enough for my dry skin. But in in the summer, on really hot days where I don't want to be sticky, this was great. And I think that's how I used it initially. And then I had so little left and I just wanted to get the bottle out of my house. So I just like in one or two days used up the rest. I have this Myzon Original Skin Energy Collagen Serum. It was okay. As I've been reading and listening more and more, I understand that collagen topically doesn't really do all that much. So of course, just the fact that it says collagen doesn't mean anything. It's just a very simple serum. I don't think there's anything super duper amazing about this. I don't even know what the ingredients are because of course, all I have to go on is this and then everything else is in Korean. It says it's contained concentrated collagen solution and uh, it's wrinkle care and skin lifting formula. I don't think so. I think it just added, a, you know, an extra layer of moisturization basically. And that's all it was. It was pleasant to use. I gladly used it up, but whatever claims are on here, I don't think that, I don't think any of that is true. I really enjoy oils, especially in the winter. And I went through this Good Molecules Ultra Hydrating Facial Oil and very much liked it. This was something I received in my beauty list lucky bag last year in 2023 and I just pulled it out this winter and used it up. It's a small bottle, that's the only thing. It's not even a half an ounce, but Good Molecules is an affordable brand. So I, I know I have some other oils I need to go through and I'm not gonna be repurchasing it right now, but in the future I would consider this because this was a really nice, solid, moisturizing, thicker facial oil. Just how I like it because I don't like very thin, runny oils because I have dry skin and to me that's almost like a waste of time. I have these two tiny minis. This is the BioEffect EGF serums that I got sometime, not this past Black Friday, but I think the Black Friday before in like a fancy, super duper holiday kit that I bought from the Derm store. I don't know anything about the brand because to be honest, I don't use a lot of medical grade skincare just because it's a little bit harder to get. Like you have to get it from more specialized retailers and it tends to be expensive. It's something I would love to explore in the future, but not at the moment, just because I need to use what I have and I need to not be spending money currently. This was very 
thin clear serum and I felt like it behaved almost a little bit like a hyaluronic serum. Maybe it had slightly more potent ingredients because I did feel like, I don't know if it's placebo, I don't know if it's because you think you're using good stuff so suddenly you're enjoying the experience more, but it, it felt high-end. Like it, it just, it went on so smooth. My skin glowed after. I really, really did like this serum. So it's something that I would gladly use again, but I haven't even looked up like how much is it where can you buy it if i can find stuff i will link it down below as you guys probably know i've mentioned it before i am toying around and playing around with affiliate links for the first time as of like a month or two ago or as of a few weeks ago this is all still very brand new to me if i find anything i will link it down below and obviously if you use those links if you're interested in anything that's incredible and i will be so grateful but please absolutely do not feel obligated because i don't i don't even know what I'm doing it. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. I had a sample pack of a bunch of teeny tiny minis of La Mer. What was this? This was the treatment lotion. So it was like a toner slash what is that other thing that an essence isn't there yeah like what's the difference between a toner and an essence can somebody let me know i can feel the difference usually on my skin and essences to me do have that slightly thicker texture or am i getting this all wrong but in any case yes i did absolutely love this but of course it was just a few uses la mer is outrageously expensive their creme de la creme is to this day one of my absolutely favorite creams it is very scented but that stuff in the winter that heals my dryness and my eczema and everything that is in its way and unfortunately I just cannot justify right now like a half an ounce for a hundred dollars it's just not in my budget otherwise it probably would be the only winter moisturizer I would ever use but I got this somewhere as a sample and I enjoyed it and that was my little La Mer moment of this year I have a Clinique Pep Start Hydro Blur Moisturizer little sample this was something i had from a while back and it was kind of a similar thing where i just wanted to use it up i found it in some sort of a makeup bag or something and if i remember correctly this was not hydrating enough for me and it says hydro blur because it had like a slight silicone feel to it so something i probably would enjoy again in the summer something that i think if you have oily skin you might enjoy but definitely not something i would ever use in the winter and the one time i used it this winter i was reminded that that's definitely not a product for me during the winter time summer maybe uh it had a sample of the dr jart plus this ceramidin 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 cream i love this whole line this ceramidin line the few things that i've tried from dr jart really enjoyed this my best friend i think has used several full sizes of this and he has I want to say oily combo skin, whereas I am dry and then in the summer I could be either normal or dry combo. Really like this, would be on the lookout. I think I found this at the cosmetics company store before, but I could be wrong about that. But I want to say I bought it for my best friend once there. Let's talk about some hair care. I only have a few hair care things. And then I have some samples and masks and a little bit of makeup. And then I have a bunch of fragrance samples that I went through, but I'm wondering if actually that should be a separate video because I film on my phone, I can't look up the notes. I would have to have my computer set up, maybe do some pre-planning and take some screenshots of the notes for you guys since I am terrible at describing fragrance on my own. Let me know if you might be interested in a video like that where I go through my fragrance empties in, as I said, a separate video. Because I have a lot of friends that are very much into scents and have beauty channels. From what I've heard, fragrance videos don't always do as well and a lot of people actually opt to start separate channels for that. Like my friend Kara, for example, from Beauty and the Frizz. She just started, I think it's called like Frizz and fragrance or something i'll link both her main channel and her new fragrance channel for you guys down below because if you're into fragrance definitely check her out also kelly from keep beauty real she's amazing at describing fragrance and has quite a lot of fragrance content mixed into her regular videos laura me beauty i love her fragrance channel as one well, as well as her main channel so i definitely have been getting more and more into fragrance but i'm still horrible at knowing what the different notes are i am just 
just starting to learn about it. I started like a little fragrance diary that I need to actually go back to because I fell off this week. I haven't had time to look up the fragrances that I've been wearing and jotting down all the notes. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on fragrance videos in general and whether that is something you would be interested in. Where was I? hair products this moroccan oil treatment i like anything that is an oil i usually throw a little bit of an oil into my hair after i get out of the shower before styling it I'm not too picky about the argan oil well this is a moroccan oil but i don't know what that means is it an argan oil what kind of is a moroccan oil its own separate thing i thought that was just the name of the brand sorry i guess i should have looked this up i before using this little mini had an argan oil that i would use every time i wash my hair and i felt like this behaved very similarly just had a nicer scent than whatever i used in the past so like this i want to say this brand is not the cheapest though but they do go on sale sometimes something to consider for the future for when i'm running out of hair oil I think I still have one more at the moment. Um, I had a little holiday kit that I must have bought a year or two ago as a gift for somebody and then probably changed my mind and gifted something else to that person. So I decided I'm gonna use this up before it spoils, but I had the Kiehl's Amino Acid Shampoo and Conditioner. I really like these, really, really enjoyed these. I thought these were great. I thought the shampoo had a really nice lather to it. It had like a thicker consistency, it wasn't too watery and runny which i don't really enjoy in a shampoo i thought the conditioner was also really nice not too thick where i'm like slipping and sliding in my bathtub but at the same time did the job on my hair so really like this and then i also went through the madame cg walker wonderful deep conditioning mask so i sometimes use things like this instead of a conditioner on certain wash days so this is a uh, scalp and strand nourishing dream come true. I've liked the Madame CJ Walker products I've tried. I haven't tried a lot. Most of it was in these little two ounce or whatever, 1.25 ounce sizes. I think I bought quite a few on clearance when this brand was exiting either Sephora or Ulta. I can't remember now because it's been a while. This was great. This was great. This is more of like a thick, slippy, slippery, gotta be careful when you wash it off kind of product because you might be ice skating in your bathtub, but it did great on my hair. It was definitely very nourishing and very moisturizing, which is what I like in my deep conditioners. You guys are not going to be able to tell anything about this and what this is but this is my jvn the curl styling cream the air dry cream i already have another one of these and this is what i've been using for probably a year now give or take this is at the moment my favorite styling product i am going to experiment a little bit more with my hair at least i want to so i just bought a new mousse to try and i tried an older mousse that i found in my closet but but on days where I don't want to take a chance with having a bad hair day, it's this all the way and I will, at least for now, until I find something even better, will continue to repurchase that. Really like that product. Okay, now here's where I feel like some of these were either declutters or I don't know. This is a use up. This is the Lorac Light Source 3-in-1 Illuminating Primer. This I think was in a basket of doom and then I enjoyed it so much and I decided, well, since it's a mini, I'm just gonna keep using it until I use it up. What I really liked about this is it had a little bit of a glow. I mean, it says it's a face primer foundation additive highlighter and it re and it's in Dawn. It really had like a pearlescent highlighting quality. Really enjoyed that. I don't even know if Lorac makes this primer anymore and I have way too many primers right now, so I am not allowing myself to purchase any more, but I would seriously consider looking into this in the future if this is a product that still exists. I really liked this primer. If you like glowy products, but without like a more yellowy or champagne tint, more of a pearl finish, then this is this is great. I have a bunch of mascaras, and I can't remember, were these ones I decluttered in my declutter video? I feel like maybe. I have the NARS Climax Extreme, which was really great at the beginning. I enjoyed it. I think it transferred a little bit, but then it dried up. This MyZone Collagen Curling Fix Mascara, I liked, but it was more of a natural mascara. It was not not, that was anything over the top exciting, but a very solid, predictable mascara. This is really dry by now. The Rare Beauty 
the mini dried up so fast. I really do feel like these were from my declutter video because I remember even talking about how I find that the mini did not perform like the full size and dried out like almost instantly. And then the Mil Milani highly rated was way too old, but when it was not dried up and not old, was definitely a mascara I enjoyed and I would consider using that one again in the future. This Give Me Brow from Benefit. This was, I think, in a wrong shade. It was more of like a red shade and even though my hair does pull red when I color it, I'm definitely not as red as this 3.5 shade and I think I bought this thinking it was the three and I made it work for a while and then in my declutter video I decided that I don't feel like making it work anymore and I am trashing it plus it started to smell weird. Lawless Forget the Filler. This is the original whatever the shade is. I never know. It's Rosy Outlook I think. This came in a Sephora favorite set and I was really excited to try it and I actually really like the product. I did not like this mini applicator though. It was really small. I had to dip into the product multiple times but I definitely still enjoyed it enough to pull the stopper out and use it up completely and it's been one that's been on my mind and I keep thinking well maybe on like the Sephora sale or maybe if there's a kit in the future maybe I want to try the other colors or scents or whatever I just don't know if I want to commit to a full size but at the same time <clears throat> excuse me but at the same time I didn't like the applicator of the mini so I'm kind of torn I don't feel like I need to add a full size to my already overflowing lip product collection and I don't like the applicator of a mini so I guess I should wait until I have less lip products and then consider buying a full size I don't know I, I, I don't even know what I'm saying I'm tired it's uh, late here's a product that I think is leaking unfortunately and that's what's been like sticky around here whatever was left in there I think leaked through this is from item beauty which is no longer a brand I, I can't even remember whose brand it was some famous young TikTok personality maybe or an actress or somebody but this brand went under and I discovered unfortunately this little mini because it was probably also in some sort of a favorite set that I had lying around too late by then I couldn't get my hands on this but this was the lip quip lip oil uh, as I said from item beauty in come through I loved this I loved this this reminded me of some sort of a candy that I remembered from like childhood can't tell you what candy probably something I tried when I was fresh off the boat from the Soviet Union. So there are definitely gaps in my memory because there were probably gaps in like the English language and there are certain things I have some taste and smell memories of, but I couldn't tell you what it was, where it was. Loved this so sad that I can't get this anymore. Right, let's go through the masks and like the little samples and then we'll be done. I left out one more skincare product, sorry. The Shani Darden Retinol Re form regenerator or some such thing. It was a retinol cream. I think I got this from Influencer to review. I don't remember if I ever actually reviewed it because I've been terrible about Influencer. I, it grew on me. I didn't love the scent. I don't know if I use retinol regularly enough to actually see any results. I would love to one day try like the actual uh, retin-A or tretinoin or whatever, you know, something you have to get a prescription for. That would of course require me to make time to actually find a good dermatologist and go see one that's a different story but yeah it, this was okay this was okay but I want to say this is not a very cheap brand so I don't know if it was worth it for the money that I would have paid had I bought, bought this myself not sure I would repurchase this I would have to look into this more as far as the prices and I feel like I've tried better retinols at least as far as the user experience and I know I have other retinols that I really need to use up so definitely not on my radar at the moment now now we're into these little sample things. This butter charcoal detox mask. Don't remember where I got this. Do remember enjoying it. I don't know this brand though, to be honest, this butter brand or whatever. I think it is actually, I wonder if it is a black owned brand because I'm reading on the back right now that it says it's for all melanin skin tones. So does that mean that there are certain charcoal masks that don't work on certain skin tones? Do, are they like too stripping? Are they dangerous? Can somebody enlighten me? Because to be honest, I, I had no idea. I've been doing mask Mondays on some, most, 
some Mondays over on Instagram with my friend Kelly from Keep Beauty Real. We're trying to hold ourselves accountable to take better care of ourselves this year, to use up more of our products, especially masks. I have so many sheet masks and that was kind of the inspiration for me behind joining in on this lovely little project. So yeah, I have quite a few sheet masks because I've been trying to use more of them this year. Karuna hydrating face mask. I used to love Karuna masks. I, I need to see if I have any more. I feel like I still enjoy them, but maybe not quite as much as I used to. I'm aging though. My skin's even more temperamental and drier and has more wrinkles and things that, you know, made me feel youthful and refreshed in my 30s don't always make me feel as youthful or refreshed now. I still really liked this Karuna mask, but I feel like there's a couple of others in here I enjoyed a lot more. Erno Laszlo white marble sheet mask. I can't remember if this is the one that was like too small for my face. One of these. One of these I struggled with and I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. But this was okay. I think I still have a few. I think I got a pack of like 10 of them from TJ Maxx or Marshalls way back in the day and I'm just trying to go through some of these older masks because some of them are either about to expire or even have expired. I'm trying to get through those first. Pachology Flash uh, Patch Restoring Night Eye Gels. I really like Pachology Eye Gels. I think I have a five pack of these or some such thing. These were just recently, I think, in the Ulta sale as well, and I think I recommended them in the videos that I did for that sale. I've been using Pathology masks in general for quite a few years and like the majority of them. This, this is one of my favorite sheet masks. This is, uh, I was mentioning earlier that I like this whole Ceramidin or Ceramidin line. This facial barrier mask is one that I keep coming back to. I usually get mine at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I haven't seen these. I've seen all of, like, a ton of the other Dr jar masks. Haven't seen this specific one. Sephora was just recently clearancing out a bunch of them. So I gotta look. I hope they're not gonna discontinue this because I will be very sad. Uh, is folio egg essence mask not hydrating enough for me? I just have, I think, still a bunch of these. Again, either expired or expiring. Trying to go through. This is a Korean sheet mask. I'm sure it was a TJ Maxx purchase. It's one I like. It's moisturizing but not quite moisturizing enough. I have others that are even more thin and almost like more stringent and more toner like than anything else whereas this one does still sink in and give me some hydration but not as much as something like this for example the soothing hydro solution ones i have two of them they're slightly different packaging but same mask i remember oh no i have three of them i've really been on a roll here trying to use these up i guess i must have a bunch of these that are expiring i feel like i used to like these more than i do now or at least maybe because it was winter and these maybe would be much better for me in the summer. These are the ones that I felt are like more toner like and they are very refreshing and nice but I didn't feel like they were hydrating quite enough for me so I'll have to maybe save those for the summertime unless again unless they're expiring and I just need to go through them. Uh, this I got in my Beautylish lucky bag I believe the Jouer Luminize Dark Circle Correcting and Smoothing Eye Patches and they were quite nice quite lovely. I I have more of these. I should do a comparison between these and the Pathology and see which ones I like better because I can't quite remember. Um, this is a mask I really liked. The Erno Laszlo Soothe and Calm Sensitive Hydrogel Masks. I like hydrogel masks. First of all, they stay on better. I do find that they moisturize a little bit more. I Again, I don't know if it's all placebo and because it's like adheres to your skin more that I feel like it really holds that moisture in for those, you know, 15, 20, in my case, usually 30, 40 minutes that I have it on but I really enjoyed this and I have to see I might have a few more I'm sure again a TJ Maxx purchase because I cannot afford Erno Laszlo any other way and this is another mask that I know I got either as a gift or in some sort of a box or a subscription this a 111 skin I don't believe is a cheap brand I think this is also quite a pricey mask and this was the rose gold brightening facial treatment mask and I liked this one too I thought it stayed on if I remember correctly unless I'm mixing it up with another one but if I remember correctly I think it was also one of those thicker masks stayed on really nicely I thought my skin was quite 
plumped up and hydrated afterwards. And with that, I'm gonna leave it here. As I said, there is some fragrance that I think I'm gonna put aside and wait for your feedback to see if you guys want a separate video on that. Thank you so much for rolling with me through this yet another long video. I keep saying I need to figure out how to film shorter videos, but I haven't figured that out yet. So that might be a goal for later this year is to just mix up my content and do some things that are a bit shorter, not just to not hold you guys here for such a long time, but also to make it a little bit easier on myself because editing these epics is, is a lot. It's a lot, it's time consuming. It takes me several days because I am a very slow, not very efficient. I'm just not very good at editing. Let's leave it there. Other than that, thank you again. I would love it if you would subscribe so close to that thousand. Can't wait to do the giveaway. Can't wait to celebrate with you guys. So grateful for all the new subscribers. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. I hope that you are continuing to stay safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves and those around you. And I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. If this is a Martini Monday, then cheers and bye guys. Thank you.